Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to write a program utilizing arrays and a sorting algorithm. Here is our program. We're going to write a program that prompts the user to enter a number between 2 and 5,000. Randomly generate that many numbers, print out the original set of values, then sort the values, and print out the sorted set of values. Okay, go ahead and open up Visual Studio. And let's go ahead and create a new project. Make sure you select the Win32 console application. I'm going to name mine Sorting. Go to Application Settings. Make sure you select Empty Project and Console Application. Click Finish. And then when we get our Solution Explorer up here, add a new uh, CPP file called Sorting.CPP. to give us our blank slate for writing our code and see if we want to do any kind of input and output we have to include the standard io.h header file we have our main function here with our curly braces it returns nothing so I have it being void with the parentheses showing that it's not taking any parameters there okay looking at our program we said that we wanted to prompt the user to enter a number between 2 and 5,000 so we need to have something to read into uh, I'm going to create an integer called num elements, and we're going to prompt the user enter the number of elements between two and five thousand. Read it in. We'll do a little comparison. If num elements is greater than or equal to two, and num elements is less than or equal to 5,000. This means that we're good. So maybe instead of doing that, I'll say if it is uh, less than 2 or if it is greater than 5,000, then I'm going to tell the user the number is not between 2 and 5,000. Try again. Now I'm just going to return here. We could easily have made this a loop, so it looped back up and prompt the user again, but we're just going to exit the program. We told him to enter a number between 2 and 5,000, and he or she did not. So we're just going to exit the program, tell the user to run the program again. Okay, so we've done that. We now need to randomly generate that many numbers. What that means is that we are going to need... Um, okay, so we are going to need to uh, utilize an array. Uh, however, we can't dynamically allocate the number of elements in an array yet. We need to wait until we cover pointers in the future. We will do that soon. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to create an array. We'll call this one elements. And I need to create it with 5,000 elements because we might need all 5,000. Now, we might not, so this is going to be a waste of space uh, if the user only typed in 2 or 5 or 100 or 4,000 or whatever you may have typed in. This could be a waste of space. What we're doing is we're saying it's not going to be more than 5,000, so we're going to go ahead and create an array of size 5,000. This is not the most efficient way to do this. I will show you a more efficient way to do this in the future. Once we talk about pointers, then we can dynamically allocate the memory that we have inside of our array. Okay, so at this point right here, uh, I need to randomly generate uh, elements in my array based on how many uh, elements the user wanted. To randomly generate elements, we're going to need to include uh, time.h, and we also have to include standard lib.h. Okay, we are going to seed our random number generator with the system time. And now every time that I call rand, I'm going to get a value between 0 and to the 32,796 or so. I think it was that, that was the number. So what I want to do is I want to change this and make it between... Uh, oh, wait, did I say... Oh, we don't, it, we don't have to, because that's fine if we generate a number that big. Uh, what we care about here is that we just have to generate a certain number of elements. So I will create an integer i. This is just going to be a loop variable for me. We're going to loop for the number of elements that the user had, and we are just going to assign a value into my elements array coming from rand. So 
that assigns all of them. Uh, we're going to print that. We're going to create a print function. So let's create a function called print array that takes the entire array and the number of elements that we have in our array. Come up here above our main function. Create the print array function. And I am just going to print out all of the elements that I have in my array. And let's just separate them by commas. This is going to give me one too many commas because I'm going to have a comma at the very end as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Just a little logic and if statement in there can get rid of that comma. So I'll leave it like that. This is going to print out all of the elements that I have in my array. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Make sure that our code is working up to that point. So I'm building my code. It's compiling. We're down here at the bottom. A couple warnings because of that scanf function with the Visual Studio issue and the build succeeded. Go ahead and run my program. Let's see. 20 elements, please. There are my 20 integers. You see that they're all printed out right there. Looks kind of nice. Uh, I probably want to put a new line here at the bottom uh, after I print it out. And for those of you who are wondering how to get rid of that comma, I can show you one way to do it. Okay, just a little bit of logic. It won't get in here the first time. It will get in every time after that, though. Um, and you see that that's going to happen before I print out the value of my uh, array element. So that should take care of that. Put the new line there so it makes it a little prettier output. And run it again. 20 elements. You see I don't have my comma at the end now. And my new, new line pushed this down to the next line. Okay, so there are my integer values. Uh, what I need to do though is now I need to create my sorting algorithm. So there is my uh, print array. Now I'm going to create a sort array function. It needs to take both the number of elements as well as the entire array. Now if you remember in one of the previous uh, lectures that we had, I told you that arrays are uh, equivalently passed by reference. So that means that this entire array, any changes that I make to it inside of the sort array function will actually be reflected inside of the main function, which is the one that called it. Uh, it's not like passing just an integer into a function where if I change the value of it, it does not get reflected in the function that called it. That would be a pass by value. These are uh, passed by reference. It's the equivalent of a pass by reference when we pass arrays into a function. I'll explain that a little bit more again when we get to our pointers lecture. Uh, I know you all are probably extremely excited to actually learn pointers at some point in the future. Okay, so to sort my array, I'm going to use a basic bubble sort. That means that I need three variables, two loop variables, i and j, and a temp variable that I have named temp. So i is going to go from uh, 0 up to num. My inner loop j goes from i plus 1 up to num. I have an if statement. If num sub i is greater than num sub j, then I'm going to perform a swap. The way that I perform a swap is I say temp equals num sub i. Oops, not num. This is elems. That's the name of my array. Num was the number of elements that I have. I can then reset lms sub i to the lms sub j, and then lms sub j equals 10. So that performs my swap. The last step after my swap, this is going to be a uh, bubble sort. So that's the end of my bubble sort. Down here at the bottom, I just want to print out my array one more time. And this time, when I print it out, it should be sorted.
is going to build. Mine succeeded. Let's run it. Run it with 20 elements. The first time you see there is my uh, array. The second time, 1004, 2910, 66, 62, 76, 80, 86, 90, moving all the way through. It is sorted. We can run it again with a larger number. Uh, let's see, let's run it with 50. And so you see here is my 50 elements have all been printed out and they are sorted correctly down below. So there's my code. Uh, you see that, so this here is going to be inefficient because I don't necessarily need 5,000 elements. If I did have 5,000 elements, then my code wouldn't be as inefficient. There it is with 5,000 elements. You see that it is still sorted after I printed it out. It's a lot of numbers. Uh, actually, I didn't even have that many lines to scroll back to see it, but you can see, you can tell that those numbers are all sorted. So fair, fairly quickly also to sort up to 5,000 numbers. Uh, there's your bubble sort algorithm up at the top to your print array function where we're printing out commas correctly and a new line at the end. Uh, and then I just called those two functions down here at the bottom with print array, sort array, and then print array again so that you can see uh, both the unsorted and the sorted arrays. Okay, that's it for our program today. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.